Are your prospects telling you they already know what their credit score is? Are they saying, oh, but Daniel, I got karma. <laughs> or my Discover credit card sent me my FICO score. Why can't you use that? All right, do you get these? Does that sound familiar? Well, I'm going to show you in this video on how to get past that fucking excuse or that objection or that lame ass reason as to why we can't complete R1003. So stick around and I'm gonna give you the answer. First off, I'm gonna turn off this light and I wanna thank you for putting up with these dark ass videos. You know, I wake up rather early and I go to the gym pretty early and on, you know, if you, if you notice my, my video content was actually shot in commute, right? In commute from the gym to my house or from my house to work and some and sometimes while I'm out my lunch break or if I if I skate away from the office for a little bit I'll uh, I'll sneak away and put some content on here because sometimes when you have you know when you have some good ideas or at least experience something that's strong I invite you to do the same like literally share it with your team share it with your colleagues you know let them know say hey man I use this one method with with a slide dial and, a, and an email drip campaign and it shot me back like two sales you know share that shit with your team just like you shared the video links that sales remastered with your team you know you want to let them know and say hey this answer actually works I tried it and it helped me get past my challenge and so I want to welcome you back. Thank you very much for your attention. If you already know, this week has been dedicated around objections and sales objections. And so I'm going to keep the theme going and I'm going to answer one of the most common objections, which is I don't want to pull my credit, right? Like they would rather, instead of do a credit inquiry, they'd rather get and collect generic ass information it's like it's like a radio commercial or a TV commercial wasn't fucking generic enough they want generic information with their name on it sent to them it makes absolutely no sense or at least backup it made absolutely no sense to me until I figured out why they were saying it and so I'm gonna open your eyes in this video to understand the psychology of your prospect and understand the psychology of that objection and what I want to do is I want to invite you to really be personable and what I'm talking about by saying empathy this is a good example and so when you take a step back and you look at your you know you analyze your process you analyze your conversation because you can get hit with that objection at different points in the conversation it just depends on how your delivery is right and so some agents i know they'll go they'll go in for the gusto like right away like what's your social what's your date of birth you know and they'll they'll do it at the wrong times meaning that they're doing it too soon um too soon meaning that they're doing it before they have any specific leverage and when i say leverage what i'm talking about is you've peeled back a couple of the layers of their why and so when I say leverage, I'm not talking about a lower rate. I'm not talking about a lower payment or no fees or, you know, they got bad credit or they got good credit or they got equity. That's not leverage. What I'm talking about is they have a need. They have a problem that needs to be fixed and you have the solution. And because our product that we sell is money, it's time, right? So if we help you increase your savings, you can cut away from that overtime, right? And, and if you increase your savings by paying off your debt, what other you know, goals would you accomplish with having this additional cash flow? Could you imagine if you had a pay increase at a time where your cost of living has gone up, would this make it easier to breathe? Would this help you on a monthly basis achieve your big long-term goals right and, and instead of focusing on the immediate month-to-month -month goals of just getting by to the next month hoping that all the bills are covered and hoping that you got something left over to spoil yourself with at the end of each month that's what i'm talking about leverage like you've identified something that your prospect needs they need a fix they need to breathe they need they need to get their head above water and and it and it's not necessarily you know always having to be in a tough spot right sometimes it's not debt sometimes it's not cash flow that they're seeking sometimes we have you know and, and those are these are actually the best type of prospects sometimes we have a prospect who just they've got a good rate already right and so 
And even if you could lower the rate by 25 basis points, which is a quarter, or 50 basis points, which is half point or 0.5, and you're like, dude, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm giving you great benefit right here. You know, you, you're know, showing them, like, I'm dropping your fucking rate by half a point. But because the psychology behind the objection is rooted because society is training our consumers, is training society, is training even us, you and I, that pulling your credit is bad. Right or that or society and their peers are saying, hey, don't drop, don't refinance unless you could drop your rate by one point or two points, and so this becomes their measurement. This becomes their reference point, and it's going to be hard to break past that reference unless you connect with them on an emotional level. And when I'm talking about by emotional level, I don't mean like you guys are crying watching the fucking Notebook, right? Like you guys aren't watching a drama movie together and crying. I'm not talking about that emotional connection. I'm talking about you've identified what their need is, what problem they have, and what emotions that go with that problem. And so, for example, if they don't have any ability to afford their debt, then their emotion is based off of fear. It's based off of status, right? Like status, like they have to keep their status. They'll do anything to keep their status. Um, they'll do anything to survive, in other words, or they'll do anything to avoid what they fear. And so now you've identified that leverage, they are motivated by fear. All decisions are made based on emotion, but yet then justified through logic. So your goal right up front, in order to get little things like an agreement to proceed with the call, or a social security number to pull the credit, is you have to leverage that emotional tie, leverage that emotional push, right? And so think about it right now, like you watching this video right now, you are motivated for from an emotion. You're motivated from an emotion of status, right? Like maybe you wanna uplift your status, maybe you wanna get to that new income bracket, maybe you wanna get that sales tier or get that recognition or prove all these other motherfuckers wrong, that you could do it no matter how young you are, no matter how new you are, no matter how fresh in the fucking industry you are, you got this bitch and you're gonna make this shit happen. Like like that could be pushing you because it, at the root of it, after you peel back your layers of, of your why, right? Like why do you do what you do every day? After you peel back your layers and you find out and say, oh well fuck, it's just because I want status, right? And that's, that's number one, step number one, find, like get self-aware aware because when you become self-aware and you understand what pushes you what motivates you you then understand how common emotions are and so you think emotions are pushing you hard boo boo imagine how hard your emotions are how hard the emotions are pushing your prospects and then what's even better is when you figure out how to play with that when you figure out how to actually manipulate the environment like the energy the the conversation you can control it in a way where you can influence urgency you can almost um, position yourself to where you're already addressing the objections because you understand their emotions and so yesterday I had a um, you know one of the objection videos I had um, I, I was I was covering the technique of actually melting objections before they come up, and one of the main ways how is that your you know you've you already identify what their concerns would be because you've done it so many times or because you've read the right signs, and so if their emotions for example was to create some sort of savings because maybe the wife lost her overtime or maybe the husband is retired and now they went on fixed income or you know there's something outside of just debt consolidation or the need for cash out for home improvements right there's there could be something else all right and and so when you identify that and you 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 verify and you validate through a, a doing a, a conversation correctly do doing your 1003 properly opening up your initial sales conversation so you can extract these facts and therefore use it in your advantage to properly sell that person then you've done something different you've done more than make statements when you ask for the social security number Right, and what I mean by statements, by 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 you know, what I mean by statements is saying that oh, but you know, every year you're allowed one free credit pool, or oh, you know what, I can't release any accurate information until I verify your credit. You know, those are statements, right? But when you are able to sell them on an emotional level, and you actually connect and 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 leverage their emotional push, their emotional tie. You can instead sound like this and say, you know what, I completely understand. At, at, at the end of the day, the reason why I even went through 
the phone call made it up this far because I wouldn't have gone this or made it this far if I if I didn't think I can serve benefit but considering your goal was to create some breathing room because your current expenses f exceed your net income you have a choice. You can continue down this path right now and roll the dice on your credit, your equity, your home ownership, and the future of your ability of, ref of financing anything. Not just a house, your car, or credit cards, anything like that. that. That's the end goal, right, in the path that you're in. Or your alternative is to, is to create the breathing room so that you have the, the cash flow available to cover these liabilities. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you how to create a surge of cash flow so that you can liquid or you can pay off a, a big chunk of this debt. If not replenish, use it to put in the bank, right? So if you had an extra couple grand, you could just put it in the bank and let that sit. Let that be your cushion so you don't have to continue adding to your debt. So when you have to pay a bill, instead of reaching for the credit card, you are confidently reaching for your bank card. I can show you how to get there. I believe that's step number one in going into the direction you want to go. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't have made it this far unless I knew I can help you cross that bridge. And so I understand your concerns about credit, but at the end of the day, the only reason why you have credit is because it is a, is a way to measure your responsibility of managing your debt. And so if you're concerned about your credit score, I'm showing you how to improve your credit score. Your credit score is used as a reference point for for credit to be given. And so if you're cautious about hurting your FICO score because you're not sure if I can give any benefit, then I'm gonna show you how to get out of that concern or that state of worry and give you a strong enough FICO so that doesn't even become a question. You know what does become a question is what is the absolute best you got because I'm entitled to it. And you will be too because you'll have better FICO. But here's the thing is I'm not even necessarily credit driven. As a matter of fact, the only thing that I, I can do actually is I have to help you. So it, it, that's why I was asking these particular questions is I need to make sure that I can provide some sort of benefit because if I can't give you any benefit, if I can't help improve your current term, even if I wanted to, I couldn't try and help you because compliance will protect you as a consumer. And more importantly, I'm sharing with you the information to keep my license number intact, but I'm also giving you the inside information that's helped me um, take care of all of my clients and why my clients continue returning back to me is because I put a solution together that is in line with your exact needs. I'm not just giving you generic information, but if you want generic information, feel free to turn the TV on or the radio on. One of their commercials will give you generic information for that day. Um, but again, if, if you don't verify it applies to you that day, then you're going to have to do it again tomorrow. So get something that's a little bit more tailor fit and I'll show you how to get there. You know, something along those lines. And, and uh, you know, I went on a little bit of ramp, but I'm giving you examples of how to lead towards that conversation. But here's the, here's the thing. Here's a trick, right? And so after you say those things, you got to stop. Just stop talking and you have to come through with the right tonality. You got to come through with the right tone. Um, you know, there, there's, there, there's a difference between someone like think of a friend who, who may be at work or, you know what I mean? Or, or someone at home and they come up to you and they're like, Hey, you, you guess what? Right? Like they got a secret, like, Hey, you want to know something or, Oh dude, guess what I heard? Right? They, it's that tone, right? And that tone has something, has, has something, uh, that triggers you that, that you just perk up. Like you listen, like, Ooh, like you almost get excited for the information and there's some, right? Think about it. So I want you to try that out this morning. Try it out today. Like go up to someone just playing around and say, oh man, you know what? Or, oh dude, guess what I heard, right? There's, there's something about that and anyone you tell that to, full attention will go on you. And for the next few seconds, right after you say that statement, you grab their attention, you have sole focus on what you say. So what you say in that sentence following that statement or following that question, I should say, is is going has to be powerful enough to leave a lasting impression. Has to be powerful enough to say, "Oh, I want to see more." Right? Like, um, uh, "Oh shit, this is inside information." People love inside information. That tone is different from any sales representative you've ever encountered. Right? The sales representative you you've encountered sound more sounds a little something like this. Well, yeah, let me go ahead and bring that up to the register for you. 
or oh yeah well let me go and show you the new model or oh yeah have you thought about upgrading right there's that tone like oh fuck here we go <laughs> right and and and, and tonality and, and tones and rhythms and frequencies this this shit is real this is what keeps us going it's what keeps us moving it's the reason why people listen to specific music when they work out it's the reason why people listen to specific music when they're trying to calm down it's reason why people have white noise when they go to bed it's the same reason why some people can operate well with chaotic noise in the background and some people cannot operate well when it's silent right and so if you think about this and you think about how it triggers the the mentality and the emotions behind you then you can fucking start playing with it and that's when you start getting good at your game is when you understand that these things and the only way you're going to understand is if you look at it from a third party you look at it from the outside looking in and you follow at sales remastered check out my next video the content's going to be fire i'm going to get in here i'm going to get ready and i'm going to get back to this motherfucking grind called life i hope this video helped you and if it did leave your comments below and please as always, consider subscribing, hit the bell, and share the content with your sales team on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn. Give me that like. It helps me. It helps me with getting in the suggested section and building the community and giving the help, support, answers, and mentoring to others who appreciate just like you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.